Hi there, everybody. Um, for lack of a better way to do this, I'm just gonna call a list of names. And if I call your name, if you could meet me up here at the podium, I would absolutely love that. And I apologize in advance, I will most likely butcher some names. Um, Tony Cugno, Jay Cuneo, Ross Jones, Devin Reed, Michael Stewart, David Jones, Lauren Scott, Ashley Shorter, Bar Barbara Halverstadt, Greg Willis, and Andrew Rush. Perfect, so I'm just gonna have you guys kind of line up behind the podium. Everybody sit this way a little bit. Can I have you come on this side? Actually, one of you, can I have one of you guys come down here? Perfect, thank you guys. Cecil Field, great to be here. I want to thank uh, the mayor for being here. We also have a, a lot of members of the Jacksonville City Council with us. I want to thank them for coming. Representatives Duggan and Bird, Mark Van Lowe, CEO of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority, uh, Matt Pacino, Interim Director of Cecil Airport. Uh, we have uh, folks from FDOT, Brad uh, Thoburn and Greg Evans. Uh, we also have folks from Space Florida and Enterprise Florida. And he can't be with us tonight, but, but Senator Bean has been very uh, instrumental in, in pursuing opportunities here at Cecil Field. And that's really what we're here to be able to do. As many uh, of you know, uh, Cecil Field uh, used to be a, a, a key hub uh, for our military. That 
uh, decision in the early 90s was that it, that it would close, and there was, of course, a lot of uh, a lot of interest in what would happen after that. And I remember there was a lot of folks in the uh, who were military centric who were sad to see uh, that happen. Uh, but what really has happened is you've had wave after wave of construction and investment uh, to where Cecil Field is is a real leader in commercial aerospace. Um, it's an economic engine for this community. They have world-class tenants and a world-class vision for growth. Uh, and so today, uh, we are announcing uh, $6 million from the Governor's Job Growth Grant Fund to the Jacksonville Aviation Authority uh, to support construction uh, of nearly two miles of roadway at the Cecil Airport and Spaceport, and that will include all the relevant uh, utilities and services, and that is going to represent a massive expansion of the potential uh, for here in Cecil Field. And so this is a uh, this is teaming up with uh, EFI, Space Florida, DOT, Jacksonville Aviation, the City of Jacksonville, uh, to really do a significant project that's going to have. Uh, a huge amount of money, and uh, my wife is calling me, and I am not <laughs> home, so. Um, but when you take the $4 million commitment from DOT that was made prior, then you have a $3 million commitment for Space Florida. Uh, they will, of course, be able to add this key, key road, uh, but they will, as I mentioned, all the utility infrastructure necessary to support commercial space and business expansion at the Cecil Spaceport uh, will be included in this. Um, and this will uh, le uh, allow a, a significant increase in launch operations from the spaceport. Uh, there's already, you know, a company developing hypersonic crafts and satellite launch systems at Cecil. Uh, and our continued investment, which we have been doing, uh, they've been able to expand in Jacksonville. Uh, this is Generation Orbit, and they're scheduled to begin their launch operations uh, next year. Uh, the roadway will also help enable new companies to locate to the area, and this is uh, obviously a great place to be for a lot of folks. Uh, overall, with the investments we're making, Cecil Airport is expected to more than double the number of employees, adding 3,780 new jobs and bringing the total number of jobs at the airport uh, to 6,251. The infrastructure project is also expected to almost double the economic impact of Cecil Airport to more than $7 billion annually. And we, of course, uh, are supporting infrastructure, uh, but we also uh, are looking to make an impact on education programs for in-demand uh, career. Cecil Airport is home to the Florida State College of Jacksonville Cecil Center, which provides on-the-job training opportunities for the college's aviation and commercial uh, vehicle driving programs. And so we want to continue to do that. Uh, we're uh, proud of what uh, Florida has been able to accomplish, particularly over the last uh, year and a half. We are clearly uh, leading in terms of uh, driving job growth in the United States. There's a lot of headwinds in terms of what's happening overall with the economy. When you look at things like inflation and gas prices, these are huge, huge weights that are very difficult. Uh, and I think Florida, you know, we've been able to, to, to plow through that uh, more effectively than most, uh, but it certainly continues to be cause for concern. But our job growth rate um, in the private sector is outpacing the nation. In September, we had 194,000 jobs nationwide. Uh, Florida alone was 84,500 jobs in the month of September, uh, and we have many job openings, uh, and there's a lot of businesses that are looking to hire. So that's a good problem to have. We want to continue to work so that Floridians have the ability to succeed, uh, have jobs, and provide uh, for their families. And so we're excited about today's announcement. I think it's going to make a real difference. And when we're doing our infrastructure investments, uh, you know, the things I look at are you know, what's going to have the, the, the most impact, and then if our investment comes in, is, is the project going to be complete, or is this going to be something we're going to have to continue to give money for year after year? And this is the final piece. This has been something that they've been wanting to do for a long time, and so now we're able to come in, uh, get it teed up, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll commence. And so it's an exciting day, and I really think that uh, here at Cecil, uh, there's a, a lot of great opportunities ahead. It's going to be a tremendous driver for Northeast Florida. So uh, Mayor Curry's with us here, so you want to come up and say a few things? Thank you, Governor. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of the City of Jacksonville, Jacksonville Aviation Authority, the members of our City Council, the Governor, we're grateful for this investment. Uh, our two representatives, we're grateful for, again for this investment. We appreciate your commitment to space, aviation, jobs, and infrastructure. Uh, and Governor, I just want to say again, really appreciate your lead leadership, particularly over the last two years in incredibly difficult and trying times. You've been strong. 
you've been tough, and you've always looked out for, for, for Floridians and for people of Jacksonville. Thank you. Okay. We have uh, Representative Duggan. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, I'm Wyman Duggan, uh, House District 15, uh, which in which you are all located right now. Cecil is probably the premier economic asset in House District 15. I wanna just give a little color to some of the um, some of the things that the governor already talked about. According to the Space Foundation, in 2020, a COVID year, the commercial space industry was a $447 billion industry. It's a safe bet within five years, it's gonna be a trillion dollar industry. And the investment that, the incredibly generous investment that the governor has made today in the critical infrastructure for Cecil Spaceport is going to set the table for a tremendous economic development opportunity for all of Northeast Florida. Uh, down in Brevard, they are a victim of their success. Between NASA, the Department of Defense, Blue Origin, SpaceX, they are bursting at the seams. There's not a lot more room to, to develop down there. The commercial space industry wants to get to space. Florida, and particularly Northeast Florida, is one of the few places on the planet where you can get to any orbit from, la from a launch here. You can't say that everywhere else. They're going to want to come here. And they're particularly gonna to wanna to come here if you think about manufacturing and development. Many of these companies would tell you they'd trade 10 rocket scientists for a sheet metal worker. We are going to be able to create thousands of jobs, not just scientists and engineers, but logistics, manufacturing, all kinds of great quality, high paying jobs for our entire community that is gonna all stem from an investment like this. Finally, uh, the commercial tourism industry. Uh, if you've got the discretionary income to go to space, do you wanna be sitting while you're waiting to go to space in the Mojave Desert uh, with uh, Richard Branson's outfit? Do you wanna be in uh, Boca Chica, Texas with SpaceX? Do you wanna be in Brownsville with Blue Origin? Or do you wanna be in Ponte Vedra while you're waiting to go to space? People are gonna to wanna to come here to spend their money to get to space. And again, the investments that we're making today We'll set the table for that. So thank you again, Governor. And, and let me just close by saying, I'm sure everybody in Northeast Florida will join me in wishing your wife a, a quick recovery. Okay, Cord Bird. Good morning, thank you, uh, Governor. Um, I'm Cord Bird, I represent House District 11. You know, Florida has always been the gateway to the stars. And if you look historically at the aviation and aerospace industry, uh, it, it has come through Florida and many of the, uh, I the innovations in our history um, have been uh, right here in North Florida in a great partnership with our, our military community and the, uh, the uh, defense industry. And investments such as this just will reaffirm that Florida will lead the way in the future, not only nationally um, under the governor's leadership, but internationally and worldwide uh, in the area of aviation and aerospace. I really thank the uh, Mayor Curry, uh, the, our partners in the city of Jacksonville, the, the business community here uh, in North Florida, and uh, Space Florida uh, to make this possible. Um, jobs are critical, and this will provide the high paying jobs to lead uh, Florida in the 21st century. So I appreciate uh, the governor's leadership on this issue and my partners in the legislature for making this happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so Mayor, JAA, you guys wanna come and accept the, uh, accept the check? So, six million smackaroos, not a bad day at the <laughs> office. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Governor. Yeah. Thank you. Just to make a, a couple uh, additional comments, there was the uh, report in the New York Post about one of what they're doing, what Biden administration's doing. They're, they're flying in people who came illegally, dumping a lot in Jacksonville in the middle of the night. And uh, there was uh, an individual who had posed as a 17-year-old, as a actually was in the mid-20s, uh, brought here, had been here, ended up uh, committing a murder. And so now this individual has, has been detained, should have never been in this country to begin with, and definitely should not have been dumped in the state of Florida. And so these are middle-of-the-night flights, no, no notification to the state or anybody, uh, and this is not the way uh, you keep people safe. It's reckless uh, and it's wrong. And I'm gonna ask the legislature to see what can we do 
uh, to uh, make sure that, that they can't just do this with impunity because these are private contractors the federal government's hiring coming in. You know, if you're bringing in problems like that, then I think we have to reevaluate you know, what you're able to do business-wise in the state of Florida. So we're going to definitely do, I'm going to see what we can do from executive. We have, uh, of course, uh, have a pending lawsuit against the Biden administration challenging their catch and release policies. Uh, but, but this is what happens uh, when you engage in reckless policies. Uh, we also have just seen published today this proposed OSHA rule uh, with the forced vaccinations. And I just want to say, we've said from the very beginning, uh, Florida will contest that immediately. They do not have the authority to unilaterally impose this through an executive agency like OSHA. Uh, if you read what they're saying, they're saying this is an imminent danger. It's got to be an emergency rule. These people have been working this whole time. They've been working for a year and a half. They've been working. They announced that they were going to do this in September. It took them six weeks to write the rule, and it doesn't go into effect until January. So they're abusing emergency power uh, to be able to do what they would not be able to get through the Congress uh, and do in a constitutional way. And so we are going to be challenging that. Uh, and I think this rule is absolutely going down. And it's just not something that, uh, that, that, that is appropriate. Forget about even the, the substantive issue, which is a legitimate thing. I mean, you know, my view is, and we're going to have the legislature come in in a, in a couple of weeks, is, you know, people should not be in a situation where they're faced with the jab or their jobs. Uh, people have been working. We don't want to kick people out of jobs. And that's true if you're a police officer, if you're a firefighter. It's also true if you're in the private sector. We want to protect people's jobs. It's not right to treat people that way. Uh, and so that's just, that's just bottom line fundamental. But even beyond that, uh, at what point does the federal government uh, have the limit to their power? If they can just go ahead and impose this on the entire private economy? Through, a, through an executive, uh, executive fiat, uh, that's not the way uh, our constitutional system is set up. So Florida will be responding, and I think the rule's going down. I just don't think that there's uh, an adequate basis for it, and I think you've even seen people uh, on their side acknowledge that they don't have firm constitutional footing for this. Never, Congress has never legislated this. This is just pure executive edicts. Um, and then the final thing I'll just say, because you know, people have been asking uh, with these uh, these childhood vaccines in Florida, there will be no mandate for COVID vaccines for children allowed. I mean, that is a parent's decision, um, and we are not, it's not already not lawful to, to mandate COVID vaccine uh, for, for young children, uh, and we're going to make sure that, that that is enforced and that parents are the ones that can make these, uh, you know, key decisions uh, for, for their children uh, and for their future. And so with that, I'm happy to take a few questions. Yes, sir. So the, uh, we basically months ago have the vaccines are going to everybody in the, in the normal medical system the way it is. So it's like we're not, we're not doing vaccine sites. They're at the pharmacies. They're readily available for everybody. Um, I don't think that there's any difference in the vaccine that's doing. I think they may take a lower dosage. Uh, so there's, there's no shortage of, of availability of any of that. But it's not something that the state is administering at this point that we basically got it through the uh, whole whole economy in April and so it's been available at every drugstore since then all right thanks guys we'll see you soon all right thank you Board meetings, don't screw it up. <laughs> 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 <laughs>